Well, <clears throat> good morning, everyone. The holidays are approaching us. This is Deborah. Welcome again to my channel. Uh, as you see, my new kitchen is behind me. Uh, I got a new washer and dryer, new fridge, and brand new stove. No dishwasher. I don't need it right now. We'll worry about that next year. So let me give you a recap of the last, I guess, nine months of my life. I got tired of the HOA in my condo at Colonial Beach. Now, a lot of you are a little, really confused because um, uh, I have said many times that I was a realtor in Florida. Well, some of you don't realize that there's sometimes no reciprocity from one state to the next. So they, they say, a lot of my subscribers go, well, why didn't you just sell your own condo? Well, people, it's because I let my real estate license lap in Florida and I went in to start my own um, uh, my own business, and then I work. I went to work in a pharmacy, so I couldn't because I don't have a valid real estate license in Virginia. So hope that explains that to some of you all. Okay. The other thing is one of one of y'all said, "Well, um, you signed the contract. You knew it was going to be sold." No, I didn't. Okay, here we go. I did not know how hot the market was. I was told by my listing agent that the contract was a solid one. No, it wasn't. The market's so hot in the last seven months that you can't buy anything if you if you wanted a home inspection or uh, if you needed to get financing, okay? Because I had to buy my house with full cash, no home inspection, or I wouldn't have got it, people. And I know what I'm talking about because I put like four or five contracts on homes in this interim. So she had two or three contingencies. Valid home inspection, it passed. Financing, and I think there was some, some other thing. Well, the thing of it is, uh, she already got the place 10,000 under because I raised the price when I realized how hot the market was within 24 hours. Well, she'd already got a contract. She was the first person who seen my unit. She bought it within five minutes with contingencies. I shouldn't have listened to my realtor because it was not a solid contract. I could have sold it the next day with none of these contingencies for 10,000 more. There's no doubt in my mind. So this is what happened during it for those who say, well, you knew you were selling it. You knew you had to get out. Well, when they got the financing, they they were short. The finance company says, no, we valued it 3000 less than what this lady is selling it for. So they came back, the realtor said, oh, we want you to reduce it by 3000 No, I wasn't about to. And so I was told that she didn't have the money and that the deal wasn't going to go through. And this was like three days before the tentative closing date. So you see how um, I was not sure if it was going to go through. So I lost like a week of planning because I was told she didn't have enough money. And I, the deal was dead. All of a sudden she came up with the money. So that's why I was caught off guard. So... And the other thing is I'm handicapped. It takes me a lot of time and energy to find people to help me. Thank God there's a lot of friends in my town who did come to my rescue. So hope that explains it for some of you all who have too much time on your hands, okay? Since then, I, like I said, I tried to buy some other homes and then I became homeless because I had no place to live. So I have like a thousand relatives, most of them in the Manassas area. So. I was going to live with my friend in Dumfries. No doubt about it. I told everybody. And then my friend got a call saying that one of my other friends, best friends, died. My brother's wife. So I had, since most of my really nice clothes were in storage, I had to go out the, the, day, the night before the funeral, go to Chico's and buy something appropriate for a funeral. Then I realized my brother and my nieces, his children, needed me desperately, to, someone to hold on to during this traumatic loss. It was unexpected. She was 10 years younger than me, a beautiful woman. In fact, I have a picture I will show you. Hold on, let me get it. 
This is me and her like 35 years ago. Great figure. As you see, I tan really good. That was the only time me and her were to ever alone without children or grandchildren. So yeah, and I'm still trying to get over that loss in my life. So my brother says, Debbie, come and stay in the spare bedroom. So I stayed there and I helped him with the dogs and with a couple of meals. It was horrible to see my nieces going through this early grieving process. So during this time, my daughter in Key West was in such a bad place that I had to get on a plane at 4 a.m. and not tell anybody and get the hell into, go into Key West. Now, if you've ever been into Key West, they have one gate, small airport. I go in there and I find out United has destroyed my luggage. So my daughter screamed in my arms probably for two days. She just couldn't stop screaming. She needs help people. She had just gotten some really bad news. She had just put her precious little dachshunds down and she was just beside herself with grief. She also is going through a lot of stuff that I can't reveal on here. Um, so when I got her to, if you watch all those videos back in January, you, you will see how tough it was for me. I wanted to give up as a mom and just go back. But I, moms don't give up. So I got her in a good enough place and then I left. And when I came back, my car, uh, my car needed a lot of issues because I left in the middle of a snowstorm. My windshield was cracked, the battery was dead, the keys were locked in the car. It's a very long story. Um, and I've been hearing this thumping. If you watch all my videos from when I lived in Colonial Beach, I kept hearing this thumping noise. Well, I did enough research and I knew it was a carrier bearing. The carrier bearing, I believe, is somewhere in that drive shaft, people. My ex-husband is a heavy-duty mechanic, an airplane mechanic. mechanic. He is like an uh, expert at working on Ford cars, even though this is a Cadillac. He guided me through this process. And he talked to me about the concentric transmission and how it has to be exact. And he said, Debbie, you might as well just do the whole drive shaft because that way the shop that you're going to won't have to take it to another shop and bring it back and make sure it's perfect. He said, just do what the people say and get a whole new drive shaft. And during that time, I found out my engine mount was uh, bad. So. All I wanted was it to pass inspection. Then I made a, uh, an appointment for Safe Light to replace my windshield because when I was in Key West and I came back, the windshield cracked from all that snow. Safe Light wouldn't touch it because they kept telling me they couldn't because somebody had replaced the windshield in the past and it had a bunch of glue that they weren't familiar with and they said, this is impossible. You're gonna have to sell the car. Well, I never believe the first thing that's told me. So I just dealt with it. And, and I'd already gotten a ticket while my car was parked in Manassas for, because uh, I did take off my rejection sticker, which you should never do. Keep it on there. Um, so in the meantime, uh, during the death of my friend, uh, they found out in the will they found out, my brother found out in the will that they have to sell all of his wife's property in the probate. So um, I think two of his children were living in two of the four homes she owned. So they now have all bought new houses. Um, I think one child has, and my brother just bought an estate near, uh, uh, I guess, Front Royal. So, um, so then I, uh, I knew I had to get out of there. So then I decided to finally visit my granddaughter who lives in Concord. And while I was there, um, I had a little work done. Yes, I have had work done.
but not what you think. I've never had a facelift. I just had a little Botox here because I get those little lines and I had a lip flip, which makes it look like you got an upper lip. Now that was like three months ago. It's pretty much faded. <coughs> so, <coughs> um, while I'm there, I called three or four realtors because I really like this area. None of them would return my call. They're that busy. So I finally got a hold of one lady. I said, listen, I've done, I did all the research. I did all the legwork. I pulled up six homes. I said, take me, somebody, you know, meet me at these homes and we'll look at them. Well, some of the homes that I really wanted already had tenants in them and they couldn't get permission that fast. So we go to one that was empty. The minute I saw this place, it had been flipped so gorgeously. And the and every piece of drywall has been done, every window, uh, it was just gorgeous. And I put an offer on it immediately without <clears throat> looking at anything else because I knew it was that hot. So <clears throat> I paid cash. Now, in the meantime, way last year, I had uh, like 90,000 airplane miles and I had already promised another good friend who used to be my neighbor next to the White Marlin Open on 14th Street. We had planned to go to the DR again. And I was there last, uh, like last December. So I had already booked another trip for this April. So here I am, I get, uh, I close on the house, pack a suitcase, get to the airport. Um, I was at, I was at uh, Dulles, yeah. I think it was Dulles. And I go... No, I didn't do that. I drove to Ocean City and the, the husband and wife, we both all went to BWI. And that's when all flights to Miami were canceled for two days. Uh, air traffic control just shut it down. So we had to take a $400 Uber to, um, to an airport in Newark, New Jersey, because they did have flights that would go straight to Miami, but the other one from BWI would not. They would not go through Miami. So they just recently got, because they had the travel insurance, they recently got a lot of money reimbursed. So when you go traveling, keep every receipt. I don't care if you buy a drink for a friend. They even got reimbursed for that. They got reimbursed for all the Ubers we had to take. They got reimbursed for the food. Always keep an envelope and keep every receipt. Even if you don't think it is important, you keep it anyway, because they, they got back almost a lot of money. I haven't had a chance to do that because um, I've had uh, the thing with my daughter that my ex and I are dealing with. Now, I haven't called my ex because he's getting bombarded en enough because when I left that marriage, I let him have everything. I gave him all the trucks, signed him over at DMV, um, a lot of you even um, think I'm making that up. No, I'm not. I, I was at DMV for a week because you can only transfer three titles. Now, this was, what, 17 years ago, I guess. Uh, so it took us a whole week of sitting at DMV for me to sign over all these titles. It was in my name, the company, my name, okay? I have no reason to lie on my channel. I am too open, if you ask me. So that's a, a recap of my life. And now my son, I told you he's had a broken heart. Well, he couldn't stand it anymore. He actually got back with the girl that he's been in love with for eight years. Now that <clears throat> might make a lot of people in my family mad, but let me tell you something. I believe that people should have a second chance sometimes even a third chance. People make mistakes. I am not perfect. I have to pray every night for to do the right thing. So yes, he went and he got his woman back in his life and he is doing incredible things, which I really don't wanna talk about, but he is visiting Bill W and uh, First time, 26 years. And I've been supporting him 100% and 
and it is a it is a prayer that's been answered it's a prayer that i've been saying every night for about 26 years <laughs> so he's helped me so much around my house he has put up those mirrors he's uh after all those t tornado watches he actually you know started making fun of my hundred dollar lawnmower but i refuse to carry around gas and stuff in my car so i got one that has to have an electrical cord he mowed my front yard he weed whacked he put the mulch around there he's hung a lot of uh, things that i can't um we are getting ready to, to get cement and shore up some foundation underneath just as a precaution and um we're still dealing with the cats uh there's like 20 cats within three houses of us and they are they're so sad that they are like looking for water it's it's awful um so I'm getting hungry, so I'm going to get off of here. And thanks for hearing me, listening, and watching me. I appreciate all of you. Hope I haven't bored you. All right, bye.